G'day guys, how you doing? And lately the weather hasn't been uh, been too good, so I haven't been doing any uh, astrophotography. However, I did go out and I uh, purchased myself a 3D printer because I had all these ideas uh, in my head of things I wanted to do to possibly improve the way um, my astro images are. And one of those things uh, that I do get a little bit jealous of is the diffraction spikes from a Newtonian telescope. Um, I, I feel that the diffraction spikes from a Newtonian telescope can really add just a little bit more artistic flavor, if you wish to uh, call it that way, um, to an astro uh, image. Um, especially around star clusters, uh, I really enjoy seeing um, um, diffraction spikes from that. But there's also a time and a place to, to have diffraction spikes. But uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, try and address was cable management. I wanted to try and tidy that up as well, because with a, a Celestron RASA telescope, um, the camera is on the front. So when you connect up your uh, the cables, like so, sometimes, well, you you got you to find a, a place for these. So um, sometimes you can just have them coupled up together and because there are two cables, one for your uh, power and the other one for your USB data, um, it, can, it can be a bit tricky. And if you've got one cable running one way, another cable running another way, you can get these um, diffraction spikes that are just lines. And that makes an image look a little bit untidy, especially when we shoot areas like uh, Orion uh, and Antares and, and really bright stars. Um, it, can, it can make a, an image look not so good, um, <laughs> shall I say. One of the challenges I used to do was uh, try and position my uh, cables, one running one way and the other one running the other way, something like that, and it should and it'll give a, a fairly nice sort of diffraction uh, spike, but it's not quite clean enough to, to what I would like. So uh, I had this idea going through my head. Um, wouldn't it be cool to to build one up? And uh, may have it easy to use out in the field. Um, and yeah, so I ended up uh, purchasing a three D printer. Now, this is the uh, my first version um, that I, I came up with, and it works really good. I mean, I've got um, locking points on the side there that are designed into it, so that way you can put it into the rasa, twist it, and it locks in place. Um, but it's all good for one of these cables here. Your USB cable fits in there quite nice, sits in there, doesn't really move. Um, but my Prima Loose Lab uh, power cable, it doesn't fit in there. Um, so I had to, uh, had to redesign it. And I ended up creating a, uh, another um, diffraction spike cable holder, holder mask device thing, whatever you call it, <laughs> um, with a one millimeter um, strip down the side. This is about two millimeters. So it's actually quite quite strong and, and won't break but the one millimeter one it was it was it was too thin um, sure it accommodated this cable but um, when you put a little bit of pressure on it, it 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 did break so I had to come up with maybe a, a, a different idea because um, I really wanted something that would lock the cable in but you didn't have to um, put tape around it or uh, cable ties or, or anything like that. It, it had to be, um, you had to be able to pull it all apart and put it all back together again without too many troubles and issues. So I came up with this version here. Now, as you can see, it's got um, little tabs. Two go one way, one goes the other way, which you can weave your cable um, in and out of and it holds in well. However, Again, it's only got about a millimetre 
um, to two millimeters wool. And not a lot of it is sort of um, uh, there to support um, the whole thing. So they can break off a little bit. I mean, it does take a little bit to break off, but they can break off. So in the future, I am looking at um, maybe coming up with some other ideas. But until then, this is what I've sort of come up with. And I've never really 3D printed before at all. Um, so oops, so it's, it's been a, a, a learning curve, um, especially trying to get the, the print to actually stick to the, the bed. Uh, it really does require that, um, uh, that nozzle to be uh, as close to the bed as sort of possible, um, as well as the temperatures as well. So this one here is a, a carbon fiber um, based filament. And this one here is just your normal PLA that came with the, the printer. And if you're wondering, oh, I bought a um, Creality uh, Ender 5 um, printer. So yeah, uh, this is what I've been up to um, with some of my spare time. Uh, seems we've had a bit of storm, stormy sort of weather. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know what you guys um, think of it. Now, I am looking at designing another version of this as well with the, uh, the slight curve uh, in, the, in the mask. And what that will do is create uh, sort of rounded stars instead. Um, I have seen a few samples uh, out there on the internet and of people using that create um, really nice looking rounded stars. Uh, but I want to, um, I really like the, uh, the result I've got so far from the, um, the fraction spike. And I will show you the image that I took uh, of Antares. And it was a very, very, very quick setup and, and, and image because, uh, like I said, the, the weather here hasn't been that good. And uh, I was able to quickly get out there, take a shot, and then basically pack it up. So it's uh, not even a stag version. It's not not anything special at all. It's been stretched as well, and it's uh, very noisy and light polluted zone and blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, I just want to let you guys know what I've been uh, sort of up to a little bit. Now, I will just quickly show you um, the idea, the concept of it all. So, basically, um, you could grab your power, I mean, your um, USB cable, like so, and wind that in. And if you wanted to, oops, get up. You could do power as well. Like so. And as you can see, the, the cables tuck in there um, quite nicely and neatly, and I can either go down, and as you can see, <laughs> might be able to see here, I've already broken one off here, um, or, or go up. So there are a couple of um, other ones I wanna I want to build up as well, just to uh, get used to the, uh, the printer side of things. And if I just unplug it all, like so, I can twist it, and it comes off. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you guys think of my little diffraction spike masks and cable management. Um, and let me know what you think of the, uh, the diffraction spike it, uh, it produced. I'm pretty impressed with it. I quite like it. Uh, the other thing I, I'm going to do is make up some other parts too. Um, one of the things that I believe uh, the RASA does um, doesn't have is that ability to be able to turn your camera around and uh, and have some sort of degree markings. So I want to build a plate up um, with some de degree markings, so that way I can rotate the cameras around. And because I run two cameras, I can have them um, set up that way. So the one of the issues that I also have is having to shoot dark frames, uh, shoot my calibration frames, and Really, with a refractor or um, anything like that, you can just cover the top of the telescope and you can shoot your uh, your dark frames. With the RASA here, we don't quite have that luxury. So uh, what I'm assuming a lot of people do anyway is they just remove the camera altogether and shoot their, their uh, the dark frames. But the problem I have is that both the cameras are usually aligned with each other because I'm running the two 
two systems. So for me to turn a camera slightly puts it completely off frame wise to the other um, camera. So I was looking at designing a, a dark frame cap that could go over the top. I sort of did, um, but I realized that I can get away with it if I just design a, uh, a degrees um, sort of marking that can sit on the, uh, on the plate here. And that way when you turn it, um, you can put a marking on, on this plate here and you can sort of get an idea. I have made a, a couple of quick versions um, of it, but I feel I need to uh, slightly improve that idea a bit more. And this way I can then rotate the cameras around to um, the angles that I need to shoot the targets, have them in the frame of view, the frame of field that I want. All right, well, uh, yeah, I'll leave the, uh, leave the video here. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, give me a big thumbs up. Leave a comment on what you think of this whole idea and let me know what you think of the uh, diffraction spike in the star Antares. All right, guys, that's it for me. So until next time, take it easy. See you.